he's been better to you than you've been to yourself. You ought to give him praise right now. If he woke you up this morning and started your way, So glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Are you glad to be in God's house? How many people know you could have been anywhere this morning? You could have been in a jail cell this morning. You could have been in a hospital room. You could have been dead, sleeping in your grave, on your way to hell. But God stepped in right on time. Can I get a witness in here this morning? Can somebody say God is good this morning? Oh, he's good. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know because I tried him for myself. Anybody here ever tried the Lord for yourself? Amen. 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 Giving honor to God who is the head of my life. Amen. Is he the head of your life this morning? I, I just come to tell somebody that I love the Lord. And he heard my cry and pitied every groan. Amen. And as long as I live while troubles rise, I'll haste unto his throne. Amen. Amen. We thank God for another opportunity to stand in this holy place, not because we're so good, not because of who we know or where we work or what we drive, how much money we have, but because of who he is. We thank him this morning for all that he's done for us. I want to briefly take time to recognize my beautiful wife. Pastor Maxwell didn't make us stand up. I was wishing he would, so I guess I got to do it. If you would stand up, baby, I, I just want people to see you. Come on. She going to act like that boy holding her down. He ain't sleep yet. <laughs> Amen. Give her a hand. Clap a praise. He don't get to sleep until daddy start preaching. <laughs> Amen. Amen. To my wonderful children, Kayla and Mark Jr., I just thank God for them. You know, the other day I was sitting talking to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I thank you for my children. Amen. I have some wonderful children. Amen, as I'm sure you have too. But I just sit and I look at them, and I thank God for what he's blessed me with. Amen. Amen. Not because I deserve it, but because of grace and mercy. Does anybody know about grace and mercy this morning? Hi. Anybody know that you're standing here by grace and mercy? I thank God for them. I thank God for my, my wonderful, my beautiful mother. I want her to stand as well. Wave your hand so they can see you this morning. Amen. Amen. She's been with me every step of the way. Amen. And I'm, just, I'm not talking about in ministry. Amen. I'm talking about all of my life. She's been right by my side. Amen. Amen. And if, you, if I ever think she's not there, she always reminds me how much time she spent in labor. Uh, how she had to wipe my nose when I couldn't wipe it for myself. Amen, amen. I thank God for her. I want to thank God for uh, my pastor. Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise today. Amen. I call him the greatest pastor this side of heaven, and I mean it with all my heart. Amen. Pastor H. Bruce Maxwell, I thank God for you, Doc, and I love you. Amen. He's been there for me every step of the way, and I thank God for him. I thank God for this Lake Providence Missionary Baptist Church family. Amen. Amen. I thank God for you. Give yourselves a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. As you celebrate, amen, your homecoming uh, anniversary, I thank God for this church and all that it means to me. You're always in my prayers. Amen. Amen. I also want to recognize this wonderful, wonderful church that God has blessed me with, Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Macedonia, stand to your feet so they can see you. Amen. They, amen, amen. They love Lake Providence. Amen. Amen. And we all chartered us a bus and some drove, but they were like, we going. Amen. Amen. I don't know who we left back at home. 
Amen. It looks like everybody here. Amen. But we thank God for what he's doing in Macedonia. Macedonia is on the move. Amen. Amen. I thank God for all of these deacons, these mothers, everybody who comes out to uh, support and to hear the word of God and be the face of Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. Let us bow in a word of prayer. Great God, our Heavenly Father, the ruler of all things, great God, is once again that you've afforded us another opportunity to stand here in your presence and just say thank you. Heavenly Father, we didn't come to ask you for anything because if you never do anything else for us, you've already done enough. But Heavenly Father, we just stand here today to say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Heavenly Father, we got some issues and things going on in our lives, but we know that you're God and that you're God all by yourself. Heavenly Father, when we got up this morning and sat on the end of the bed, Heavenly Father, our bones were aching and popping, Heavenly Father, but you gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. We say thank you right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you that as we slept and slumbered last night, you didn't let the thieves, robbers, and murderers come into our, into our homes, Lord, and we just say thank you right now. Heavenly Father, you're God and you're God all by yourself. And Heavenly Father, every time we call on your holy name, you're faithful to come and see about us. And Heavenly Father, sometimes we have to ask, what is it about man that you would come and sit with him and that you would talk with us and that you would walk with us, Heavenly Father? We don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it won't let us hold our peace today. We have to tell somebody about your goodness and your mercy. Heavenly Father, we ask that you right now forever give us a testimony that says, yes, God is real. Heavenly Father, we come today, Heavenly Father, just to worship you in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, we ask that the words of our mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you hide this, your servant, behind the cross, so that these here may see thee and not me. These and other blessings we ask in your precious son, Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 I won't hold you long this morning, as I feel it doesn't take long for the Word of God to pierce the souls of man. Amen? Amen. Also, because I got some preachers behind me, and we're going to make sure that chicken didn't die in vain. Amen? We're going to get there. We're we, we going to get there uh, in just a little bit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Where there's chicken. There's a preacher. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want us all to take a moment and think about how much time, how much money, and how much effort and energy we put into things that we think are going to make our lives that much better. It seems that every time we sit around with and we watch the television, we see something that's supposed to make your life that much better. It's supposed to make it that much easier. And while we're watching these programs, these commercials and infomercials, if you're up late at night as I am, there's a still small voice inside you that says, you can do this. It tells you this product is for you. It says that this is something that will work for you, and all you got to do is get in on it. Anybody ever been watching television, that small voice says, all you got to do is pull out your credit card, and if you get in on it, everything is going to work out. This voice tells you that this is what you've been waiting for. It tells you that if you order this pill, I can lose the weight that I've been wanting to lose, but all you got to do is get in on it. Something inside of you says, if I order this program, I can have the financial stability that I've always wanted to have. I just got to get in on it. it. Something says, if you sow a seed into this TV ministry, you can achieve all of your hopes and dreams because the people on TV are real convincing. They got the clock in the corner and it's ticking away, telling you you have a limited amount of time. The petition is strong and, and all you got to do is just get in on what they got. And when we hear the promises, church, of these companies, when we hear the testimonies of other people, when we hear the experiences of the wealthy tycoons and the prophecies of the evangelists, we become focused on what they're saying and we believe this is my breakthrough. Anybody been ever, ever been sitting there late in the midnight hour? Maybe you've gotten off work at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning and it seemed like the television is talking directly to you. And so you're sitting there and after about 30 minutes to an hour, you decide that you're going to do something about it 
it and you run and grab your overextended credit card. Oh, I know y'all doing better than me. I'm just talking about myself. And I grab my overdrafted bank account number and my bill is past due cell phone and I do something that I believe is going to change my life. But the problem that I have with that church is that we do all we can to put our trust in what man says. But when we get to church on Sunday, let me rephrase that. If you make it to church on Sunday, somebody is there telling you that you can have life and life more abundantly, but you don't make a move. Somebody tells you if you bring your tithes to the storehouse, you will have a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive, but you're still just sitting there. Somebody tells you that you can have a peace that surpasses all understanding, but you won't clap your hands. Somebody say, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it'll be done unto you, but you're still just sitting there. Somebody it says that God will never leave you or forsake you. You ought to be standing on your feet. Somebody says weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Somebody said in the time of trouble, he'll hide me in his pavilion. Somebody said that God can make a way out of no way. Somebody said I will enlarge your coast and your territory. Somebody said if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. But, 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 but we still just see in here. I, I don't know why we ain't reached for our wallet and our credit card and, and, and reach back and high five somebody because God is trying to tell us something. It ain't like you ain't heard the, the good news already. The ushers explained it to you. The members whispered it to you. The choir sung it to you. The deacons prayed it to you and the preacher is telling you but for some reason you can't get into it. Oh, you can't seem to get your overextended self out of your seat. You can't get the overdrafted egos to subside for a moment. You, you can't seem to get a past due praise out of your mouth. And you wonder why things are not going the way that you would like for them to. It's because you refuse to get in to the presence of God. Huh? Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm just trying to get in this morning. I came to meet with a true and a living God. Is there anybody trying to get into the presence of the Lord this morning? I got some problems in my life and I need some help this morning. And I don't care who's looking at me. I don't care what you say about me. I'm going to raise my hand because I serve a God. Oh, does anybody serve a God who specializes this morning? A God who can make a way out of no way. I came to talk to some people who have a relationship. Maybe, but, 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 but maybe you sat beside a person who, who, who won't allow you to get into the presence of God. Maybe they're trying to tell you what so-and-so got on or who came in with who, and, and they just won't let you focus your mind and get into the presence of God. Maybe you got bills piled up on your table. Am I just talking to myself this morning? And, and it won't allow you to get into the presence of God. Maybe you're in a dysfunctional relationship that God didn't ordain anyway, and it won't allow you to get into the presence of God. Maybe jealousy won't allow you to get in, but whatever it is, you're missing out on the blessings of God. Oh, but I come to tell somebody this morning that regardless of what's going on in my life, I came to hear a word from the Lord. Anybody come to hear a word from God? I came because I got issues and I got needs, but, but I serve a God who's able. I came to leave better than I was when I came in through the door. And whatever I got to do and whoever I got to hug and whoever I got to forgive, I'm going to do what I got to do because I came to meet with the true and the living God. But, 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 but we got some people who can't get into it. And I want to tell you what happens today when we meet a man who decided he's going to get into it. So for those of you who have your Bibles, open up to John, the fifth chapter. And there we're going to talk about a man who decided to get in. Amen. Are y'all ready for a word from the Lord this morning? I came to talk to some people who were expecting a change in their life. They're tired of going through the same old, same old, and you need a word from the Lord. John, the fifth chapter. Stand to your feet when you have it in your Bibles. When the Titans come in, we stand. When the Braves come in, we stand. When the local football, basketball team come in, we stand. When the word of God come in, we stand. The Bible says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, 
which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, and whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. And a certain man was there, somebody say a certain man, which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. And, and when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Today I want to talk to you from the topic, you got to get in on this. You may be seated in the presence of God. You got to get in on this. I've been walking with God long enough to know you got to get in on this. I know that with God, every day is sweeter than the day before. You got to get in on this. You see, in our text today, we, we have our Jesus who's entering into the city of Jerusalem. He's coming into Jerusalem at a time where the Jews are gathering to celebrate the Passover. This is an annual celebration where people are gathered to celebrate the wonderful things that God has done in the history of the children of Israel. It is a time for them to reflect back to the exodus or the going out when Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt's land. They will remember the plagues that God showed Pharaoh when he demonstrated his power and his love for his people. They remember the crossing of the Red Sea and going across on dry land with Pharaoh's chariots in tow. But most of all, what I like is that they remember when God told the children of Israel to go into your house and I want you to make you some bread to take on the journey out of Egypt. He said, but don't put no yeast in it because you won't have time for it to rise because when I call, you've got to be ready and, and, and I want you to get you a lamb without spot or blemish and in four days, I want you to kill that lamb and I want you to take the blood of the slain animal and put it on the doorpost and the side post of your house because I'm going to send a death angel way down in Egypt's land to kill the firstborn of the Egyptians and if you're covered under the blood of the lamb, it says that death would pass over your house. Is there anybody here who's covered under the blood of the lamb this morning? Is there anybody who ever pled the blood of Jesus? Is there anybody here who's ever uh, uh, who understands that we didn't come here to stay but we're just passing through? Is there anybody who understands that there's a leak in this old building and one day my soul has got to move. I'm talking to some folk today who have a relationship with Jesus. We understand that one day death is going to locate my house and it's going to come down my street, preachers. And it's, the Bible says it's appointed unto a man once to die and then the judgment. But I am covered under the blood of Jesus. I got a Savior who died for me. And so when I close my eyes on this side, I'll open them up on that. That's good news for somebody this morning. I'll open them up on that side. Somewhere out there, I'll be with the master. The Bible tells us, I show you a mystery. We shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. It says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and we shall be changed. Oh, is there anybody here who's expecting a change in your life? Did you wake up expecting the same thing you always got? I, I woke up this morning expecting God to do something this morning. Does anybody believe in God today? Does anybody know that he's a way maker? Huh? Does anybody know he's a bridge over your troubled water? I don't care what you're going through this morning. I serve a God who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Oh, I remember grandma used to say, baby, trouble don't last always. Anybody remember that trouble don't last always? It's because of Jesus. I remember the songwriter said that this too shall pass. And if it gets better than that, because I thank God that the old folk used to say that one glad morning when this life is over, I'm going to fly away. Is there anybody that's expecting a change in your life? I know there are some people in here this morning that know that a change is going to come. 
We preach about a change that's going to come. We believe that there's a change that's going to come. I remember a, a man by the name of Sam Cook. Y'all know Sam Cook, don't you? He, he, yeah, y'all know Sam. He sung a song called A Change Is Gonna Come. Uh, Sam was a good R&B singer. Uh, he had a lot of number one hits. But I believe that one day while Sam was singing that the Holy Spirit crept into a studio and Sam began to sing that particular song because you thought Sam was talking about the change in an economic situation. You thought he was talking about the have and the have not. But I believe Sam was preaching 1 Corinthians 15 when it says that the corruptible shall put on incorruption and the mortal shall put on immortality. Then shall it come to pass that, that, that death will be swallowed up in victory. He was talking about a change. What's going to come? But here are the Jews celebrating and reflecting back over the things that God has done. They're celebrating the fact that one day a change was going to come and all of a sudden here comes Jesus. He just left the woman at the well. He just turned the water into wine. He just healed a noble man's son. He, he, he's looking to do a new thing in somebody's life. I know that many of us are dwelling on the past things of God and, and all that he's done for you, and that's great. But, 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 but sometimes you can't get comfortable in the past thing because the moment you realize that God has blessed you, he's already doing a new thing. How many people know that God wants to do a new thing in your life? He wants to show you his hands and his face. He, he, when he brought your child home, he was already doing a new thing. When mama got came from the hospital. He was doing a new thing. He's always looking to do a new thing. Isaiah said, forget the former things and don't consider the things that hold. Behold, I'm doing a new thing and I wonder if you'll notice it. You've got to have a relationship with God in order to notice what he's doing in your life. Uh, I, I remember the songwriter said that every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Anybody got a testimony that say every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. And in spite of myself, he keeps me in all of my ways. And, and every time I look up, he's doing a new thing in my life. You ought to ask God to do a new thing in your life. <laughs> Quit asking him to pay your bills. He already paid your bills. Tell him to do a new thing. <laughs> You've already healed my body before. Lord, do a new thing. <laughs> you gave me the good job I asked for. Now, do a new thing. <laughs> I was lost, but now I'm found. Now, Lord, do a new thing. <laughs> I'm talking about a fresh anointing, a, a wondrous blessing. <laughs> I remember the old folk used to say, just a little closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, if you please, they were wanting him to do a new thing. And so Jesus comes to the temple, and just outside of the temple is a pool. There's a pool, and there's a bath, and it's called Bethesda. Bethesda is a word that means mercy, house of mercy. It's located in the back of the temple where the sheep were brought in for the sacrifice, and so people called it the sheep gate. It was a most unpleasant place. It was a smelly place. And all around the place were, uh, were, were people who were playing with diseases and illnesses. And every time the gate swung open, in came a herd of sheep. These sheep were to be taken to the slaughter to be sacrificed on behalf of the people. And as the poor and the sick lay there wishing, if I could just have one lamb that could be sacrificed for my sin, maybe I can be made whole. And at the, as they were sitting there in agony church, watching the sheep come in and out, thinking if I've seen one sheep, I've seen them all. And inside of the sheep gate walks the lamb of God. Oh, y'all, y'all get that in the morning. Uh, in comes the lamb of God, the one the Bible says was slain for the sins of the world. Is there anybody who's ever been in a bad situation? You're living in agony. Maybe your heart is broken and your spirit is heavy. Mama can't help you and your friends have turned away from you. But all of a sudden, God's... And I'm talking to some Christian folk this morning who know what it's like to walk with Jesus and to talk with Jesus. Have you ever been sitting at the edge of your bed with trouble on your mind and all of a sudden you just said, Jesus, and all of a sudden something began to happen? Have you ever been on your job and people were messing with you and you run to the break room and say, Jesus, and all of a sudden something starts to happen? You ever been arguing with your spouse and you walk away and say, Jesus, and all of a sudden, Somebody know what I'm talking about this morning. All of a sudden, something happens. I'm talking to some people who've had some good 
good days and some bad days. You've had some ups and downs, some smiles and some frowns. And now you can say, I was young, yet now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. You can say, I had faded and I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You got to have a relationship. Now the Bible says that at a certain time, an angel would come down and trouble the water. And whoever was the first to step into the water got the healing. And every year during this season, people would gather around this pool and wait for the troubling of the water. And what troubled me about this part of the passage is that they didn't just come and get in the water, but they waited for the troubling. How many people know that uh, you can get in the water before the trouble? Huh? You got to pray before the trouble. Huh? You got to shout before you get in trouble. For the Bible says in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion. Now, I know the water may get cold. I know your skin may get dry, but you, and you may get tired. But I heard some old folks say, just wade in the water, baby, because God's going to trouble the water. Anybody ever been waiting on the Lord? Huh? And he renewed your sh and your mount up with wings and you can walk and not faint. You got to wade in the water. But the bad part about this is that instead of going to the pool and wading in the water, they sat outside of the pool and waited on the trouble. How many of us haven't called on the Lord and, and you know something's coming down the pipe, but you're waiting on the trouble? Huh? Sometimes we come to the house of God and instead of getting in the presence of God, we wait till we get in trouble. Huh? Instead of giving him some praise, we wait till we get in trouble. Huh? We sit there like God hadn't done anything for us. And all of a sudden, when God started blessing other folk, we want to get in. We want to get in after we get in trouble. But if you came to get a blessing from the Lord, as soon as the doors of the church open up, you ought to get into the presence of God. Every time you come to the house of the Lord, you ought to get into the presence of God. At business meeting, you ought to get in. At Sunday school, you ought to get in. At choir practice, you ought to get in. At usher practice, you ought to get in. The song said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because when the doors were open, he was getting into the presence of God. God. Somebody look at your name and say, you getting in or what? Look at him again and say, if you ain't getting in, just hold my stuff because I can get in just for a little while here. I, 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 I know you didn't come to worship the Lord like I did because I got some issues and problems and, and I got to get to the to the Lord. Somebody feel like getting in with me this morning. Somebody feel like wading in the water just a little while longer. I know it's dark outside and you can't see your way out of a bad situation, but how many people know that God is a way maker? He's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. He can walk across the troubled waters of your mind and say, peace, be still. I'm talking about the God of everything. I come to worship him this morning. But the Bible says of all of the people on those porches, Pastor, Jesus spots one man, a man who has been sick of palsy for 38 years, and Jesus comes to this man and says, will thou be made whole? What Jesus is saying is, will you accept me as God, and, and, and then you will be whole. You see, the man had accepted the stories about the water. He accepted the testimony from the experts. He accepted what he thought was a proven system. But the question is, will you accept God? He, he, let me, he, he reminds me of a story that I heard one time about a man who owned an expensive art collection. And he had a, a son who had died in the military who called himself a painter. And all of a sudden, one day, the man died. And they decided to auction off all of these expensive paintings. And when they got to the auction, on the auction block, the auctioneer pulled out a painting that the son had drawn. It wasn't a pretty painting. It didn't look like the expensive paintings. It didn't have no monetary value. And the auctioneer said, who will give me $10 for this painting? Everybody sat there and nobody said a word. All of a sudden, an old man stood up and said, I'll give you $10 for the painting. The auctioneer said, $10 going once, $10 going twice, sold to the man for ten dollars that ends our auction today the people got upset they said what about the other stuff we came to get the beautiful stuff we come to get the stuff that we heard about the auctioneer said it was the will of the father that whoever accepts the son gets everything else and i come to tell somebody you get in on this jesus you gotta put your bid in now you gotta make your calling and your election 
watching sure is there anybody today uh, came to get in with me uh, is there anybody today uh, who wants to follow king is there anybody in here uh, who believes that one day uh, he was taken up to calvary's mountain uh, was wounded for my transgressions uh, bruised for my iniquity they hung him on the cross uh, they stretched him wide but he, he hung his head in the shoulders uh, and that's where he died uh, but uh, you ought to get excited today uh, because early Sunday morning, uh, he got up uh, with all power. He got up with all power. And I just come to tell you today that you got to get in on this. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and you got to get in on this. Today as our choir begins to sing, I encourage you to get in on this. Jesus is the only way. He's all that you need. As the choir begins to sing, whether you come by letter, Christian experience, or a candidate for baptism, he's standing by today. Don't believe everything that you hear on TV, but what the Bible says is true. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Give God a hand clap of praise in this place for what he's done in your life. He's worthy of all of your praise today. God bless you.